Today we're taking a look at the amazing flash cart that I've got here called the Easy Flash Definitive Edition. This is by far the best flash cart for the GBA and I'm going to tell you exactly why in this week's video. Let's get started. So full transparency, before we begin this review, this here was actually sent over to me by Senko Games. So if you are interested in getting your own one, check their link in the description and go and pick it up from their website to say thank you and to support further videos like this as well. So let's begin with a rundown of what the Definitive Edition actually does better than the GBA X5, which is more than three times the price. So it can actually do everything that the GBA EverDrive can do. It can play ROMs from pretty much every single GBA game and original Game Boy game right out of the box. There are some really great additions to this Easy Flash, which makes it definitely the better option for flash carts. I'll cover more later on in the video, but just for you to get an idea, here's just some of the cool features that it has over the EverDrive. It can return to the main menu without switching the system on and off. It supports save states right out of the box, which is something that the EverDrive GBA just can't do whatsoever. The EverDrive for the original Game Boy could, but the GBA one could never do save states. So that is one huge advantage that the Easy Flash has over the GBA. EverDrive. It also supports a sleep function for every game. You can also install a lot more emulators onto this using custom firmware which I'll show off a little bit later on in the video. And most exciting of all it actually has a second mode which allows it to do some really cool things that I didn't even think was possible from a flash cart. You can actually use this as a rumble pack for DS games which is just really exciting. I've got a load of DS games but I've never had the rumble pack before so to be able to actually feel the rumble in games like Metroid Prime Pinball for example is just a really really cool feature. Mode B as well can also be used for games like Pokemon to actually transfer Pokemon from the games that you've been playing on the flash cart onto the DS games and you can also use it as a RAM expansion pack for things like the DS web browser. It also has a programmable LED light on the bottom as well, which is really nice. And as you've seen so far, it also has a much nicer UI than the EverDrive as well. It really looks nice and clean and you can actually customize it too. It supports GBA video files, which was really exciting. I actually did a little bit of an experiment where I actually took one of my YouTube videos and actually got it to play on the GBA. And that was just such a weird experience and I'm really amazed that it actually worked. Of course it has all of the same features that the EverDrive had as well, such as the real-time clock for the Pokemon games. And it also runs at a much lower power frequency compared to some of the earlier Easy Flash carts, so you don't really have to worry about the battery life as much. I think it only drains very slightly more than the EverDrive does, but you really don't need to worry about it, I haven't had a problem whatsoever. And it also has a more secure and better save system as well. So I'm sure you can tell from just that brief introduction, there's loads of really cool things that this can do. But before we take a look at that, before I show you around the menu, and before I teach you how to get it all set up, let's first begin with an unboxing and I'll show you exactly what comes in the post in this box right here. Let's take a look. So firstly the packaging. It's certainly not as flashy as the amazing unboxing experience of the GBA EverDrive. This one just comes in a small cardboard box with a little plastic inlay holding the cartridge. The cart itself is very well made though and it feels really sturdy. There's a switch on the side as well as the micro SD card slot and the LED lights that I mentioned earlier are on the bottom here. Or the top depending on which sort of GBA you're using. Unfortunately, there is a little bit of a problem with the micro SD slot, and that is that if you angle the card very slightly wrong, it can actually go through the slot and actually into the cartridge itself, and that's actually happened a few times now, and I've had to try and wiggle it around to get the SD card back out again. The EverDrive in this regard is a lot better with its safe spring-loaded mechanism at the top instead. Although I do actually like the position of this one being on the side, it feels a lot safer, especially when it's in the GBA and it's actually pushed up against the side of the system rather than being exposed. And strangely enough, just like the GBA EverDrive, the sides of the cartridge are actually shaved off. So unlike a regular GBA game where you've got that little bit sticking out at the side, so it does feel a little bit weird, but it doesn't really make that much difference, honestly. And as for the SD cards, this is a really great feature, it can actually work with cards all the way up to 128 gigabytes. Some of these devices in the past have been capped at 4 gig due to the restrictions on the format type, but I've been using this one with a 32 gig card and everything seems fine so far. So now we're done with an unboxing, let me show you how to get it set up and how to format the SD card correctly. So before you put any games onto the card, the first thing you need to do is download the latest firmware and get it all set up for use. 
You're supposed to go to the Easy Flash website and download the firmware on there, but the default one doesn't allow for some of the extra emulators and other features that I mentioned earlier. So instead I found this custom firmware on this forum, which adds a lot of extra functionality. So go ahead and download this and then copy the contents of that onto the root of the SD card. So when that's done, you should be able to load it up and see a new folder called Demos, which gives you a test file for everything that's compatible with this device. There's a surprising amount of file types supported. Whether or not you'll actually use any of them is another matter entirely, but it's pretty cool to see things like bitmap images and sound clips being played from the system. Like I said, I even managed to get it to play one of my videos. This also gives you an idea of all of the different emulators that the flashcard supports. Even really obscure consoles like the MSX and the ColecoVision run on here. Some unfortunately do run quite badly, so don't expect to be able to play things like PC Engine or Neo Geo Pocket that smoothly, but it still might be a nice idea to try some games out on here just to see whether you like them and whether you want to play them on a better emulator in the future. So that was a really brief overview of how to get it set up on the SD card. It really isn't complicated at all. There are two other things that I suggest you do though before we move on, and they do come from the Easy Flash website. You should download this folder here which contains thumbnails for all of the different games, and also download this one for all of the cheats as well. And now that it's all set up, let's turn the system on and let's go through all of the different menu options and get a really good idea as to what this flash card can actually do. So the first tab here is a list of all the games installed on the micro SD card. As you can see, they can be sorted into different folders, and as long as you downloaded the thumbnails pack that I just mentioned, you can actually press select to bring up an image of each of the games as well, which is fantastic. The menu looks so much nicer than the EverDrive one in my opinion, and you can even download custom themes for it, like this dark theme that I'm using here. You can also press the start button to bring up a recently played list as well. When you click on a game to play, you first get a menu screen with a few options on. You get Clean Boot, which just loads the game up normally, exactly as it would have been on the EverDrive, or if you were using an original cart, but more interestingly is the second option, which is called Boot with Add-ons. The Boot with Add-on option actually allows you to play the game and be able to access special features of the Easy Flash at the same time. Using this means that you can press a button combination to bring up the Easy Flash menu or apply cheats as well. And from that Easy Flash menu within the games, you can choose to either reset back to the main menu or save or load, and it's great to be able to use save states on GBA games. As I said, the original Game Boy EverDrive always had save states, but the GBA never had that ability before now, so it's really, really great that it's included. And the save states do seem to work most of the time. I did encounter a few weird glitches though when I was using it quite frequently to test the functionality. Fortunately though, if you use it sparingly, it doesn't seem to cause that many problems, but I wouldn't rely on it 100%. There's actually an explanation in the user manual that explains why these glitches might happen. And having that reset option to be able to return to the main menu is great as well. Before this, you would actually need to power down the system and turn it back on, which certainly annoyed me because you'll have to go through that GBA boot up screen and hear that chime over and over and over again, but now you can just reset straight to that without having to go through the boot up menu. The next option when you're selecting a game is called Write to Gnaw Clean or Write to Gnaw with add-ons, and what this basically does is makes a copy of the game onto the internal memory of the cartridge, there's actually 512 megabytes of built-in flash storage, so there's plenty on there for a good selection of GBA games, which are usually only around 8 megabytes each. Instead of running them from the SD card, this can actually speed up loading times for some games, and apparently there's some certain fan patches that might only be able to run using this, so it's really great that you have the option. This is also the main way that you'll be able to use the DS and GBA Link functionality. So if you're planning on playing the GBA Pokemon games, it's a really good idea to copy them onto the flash memory first before you start your save file. So from that NOR files menu, you can choose to boot or delete the game as well as format the entire folder or load or save a game directly from there as well. It's probably a good idea to back up your favourite games onto this list because it does seem more secure than using the SD card. And the final option on here is cheats, and clicking this one bring up a list of cheats for the games. If you've downloaded the cheat folder and put it in the right place, you should have a really nice list of cheats. All you need to do is tick the ones that you want to run and then choose boot with add-on, 
when you start the game up and then you can actually apply them to the game either straight away or you can actually switch them on and off through the menu within the game as well. Now onto tabs three and four and these are the actual settings on the definitive edition. So from this first tab here you can choose settings such as setting the date and time, choosing what add-ons you want to enable such as reset, sleep, save states or cheats. I just keep them all on but I think if you do turn them off the battery might last slightly longer but I haven't really noticed an issue with that. Next is language, you can either choose from English or Chinese I believe. And below that is the option to turn on or off the fast patch engine. And this is something that some fan translations might need because the auto patch might pick it up as the wrong file type. But leave it on auto if you haven't been having a problem, I haven't had any problems so far. Next you can set certain button combinations for things like sleep or for the main menu functionality. I have these set to L and R and either start or select and that seems to work really well. And finally is the real time clock function. You can turn it off to save some power if you don't want to actually use it, but obviously if you're playing a game like Pokemon you'd like this to be enabled. So you can do things like change the time of day or plant berries and stuff at the right time or evolve certain Pokemon things like that. So it's really great that it is a feature. Now onto the next tab, there's a few more settings here. There's auto save which is turned on by default, and this means that it automatically backs up the save file whenever you return to the main menu. Next is mode B, and this is whatever the cart works with if you don't want to play games, like I said earlier, such as using it as a DS cartridge, or using it as a rumble pack, or the RAM expansion pack. Unfortunately, getting to this mode B is really difficult. It's actually in this indented section here and you have to find something really small to poke in there and try and flick it across. It would be a lot better if it was actually just a regular switch or a button that you could press to switch from one to the other. Next are the LED options and these are really nice. You can change them to suit how you want it to look when the cart's idle or when it's reading something from the SD card. I have mine to display the green and blue lights when it's idle and flash red when the SD card's being used. It's a really nice effect but you can turn it off completely if you don't like it or if you don't want to waste any additional power. And the next two options here I've never actually used. These were part of the new firmware that I installed and I think it's something to do with save files but I tried turning them both on and off and I couldn't really notice any difference. And this final screen here shows what version of the firmware you're running as well as a QR code which you can scan to go to the online manual and read up a lot more information about all of this. And now we've taken a look at all of the menus, now let's get into the fun stuff which is the actual games themselves. Of course, as you'd expect, GBA games run absolutely flawlessly on this, even ones that are patched as well, and there's actually some really cool patches you can do with this that you couldn't do with the EverDrive, including things like playing Drill Dozer with the Rumble support enabled, which is really cool because usually you'd have that big red cartridge, but on here it doesn't stick out at all, and that way you can enjoy one of Game Freak's best games without it sticking out of the system at all. It's so cool to be able to use Rumble on this, it really is. As for original Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, they use the Goomba emulator just like the EverDrive did, so they run almost perfectly, there may be slight imperfections here and there, but I really can't notice that much difference, and I've played loads of Game Boy games in the past, so if I don't really notice a difference, I'm sure none of you watching will either. It's a great way to play Game Boy games, and using this, you can actually play Game Boy games on the Game Boy Micro, which never actually supported Game Boy games natively, so that's really cool to see. And using that Goomba emulator, you can actually use the SNES Super Game Boy Borders as well, which is really cool, and it's actually something I wish the GBA did natively. I don't know why they omitted this feature, because Super Game Boy Borders were actually one of my favourite things about original Game Boy games. So to be able to see them on the GBA and play the games with the Borders is just such a nice feature. As well as Game Boy and GBA, GBA games, like I said, also supports a variety of different emulators. I haven't got games or the ability to test all of these, but I'll briefly run through the list of all of the different systems that this supports, with varying levels of success. So it can play ColecoVision, Game Gear, MSX, Neo Geo Pocket, NES, PC Engine, Master System, SG-1000, SuperVision, WonderSwan, WonderSwan Color, ZX Spectrum, Chip 8, and something called the Emerson Arcadia, which I've never even heard of before, so if anyone knows what the Emerson Arcadia is, please let me know down below. And as well as that, like I said, with this custom firmware, it can also use a variety of different file types, including JPEG images, ProTracker module files, which I think are sound files, 
bitmap images, Zsoft paintbrush PCX image files, MIDI sequences, NES music files, Master System and Game Gear music files, text documents, WAV sound files, some other sound files that I've never even heard of before, compressed images, uncompressed images, Sharp 86000 music, which is a really cool addition. So there we go, that was a really in-depth look at absolutely everything that the Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition can do. As you can tell from this video, it is by far the best flash card that you can get for the GBA. And like I said, if you want to get one for yourself, check out the website that I've put in the description. Before I wrap this video up, there's some really exciting news that I want to share with all of you. I've actually just launched a podcast. You can check it out in the description below, either on the podcast YouTube channel or over on Spotify, Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts. Thank you so much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed this video. Really hope you enjoy the podcast if you decide to give it a listen. That's all for now. I'll see you very soon for the next episode. Goodbye.